Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. Today's demonstration is about how I painted this imagined big sky winter beach uh, with an ancient wreck. Uh, I want to show how with a little thought you can create a pleasing image with just a few basic elements. Uh, the placement of the wreck and the figures is based loosely on the rule of thirds to create a balanced composition. Uh, the three small yachts in the distance, two on the left and one on the right, are there to draw the viewer's eye across the painting. So let's get started. This is uh, Saunders Waterford uh, 300 gram white rough paper. Uh, I sketched out the image very loosely. Uh, as I say, it's from my imagination, so uh, nothing too specific. Uh, I'm starting with the sky and I'm just mixing up some cerulean blue and some cobalt blue for the sky that's going to be shown through the clouds. Um, darkening the mix a little bit because I want to make sure that uh, it dries with a nice bright blue. Um, always be careful that you don't mix too weak a mix with, uh, with things like this because when, when it does dry it will dry lighter. It's all a question of practice with painting skies. Just try, try on some uh, scrap paper and uh, play with it until you get get the hang of it. The more you do, the better you'll get, as with everything. Just dropping a little bit more of blue into the uh, the blue t blue tint into the into the sky to make sure that uh, some of those areas are a little bit darker. Uh, just added some clean water around the edges, just to soften the edges in, in places. I'm going to leave a few hard edge, harder edges, but uh, the idea is that um, these are just patches of, of, of uh, blue sky showing through uh, very heavy cloudy winter sky, nice bright sky. Just added a touch of uh, imperial purple to the mix just for the shadows on the clouds. Always remember clouds are three-dimensional. Try and think of a, um, a piece of uh, cotton wool floating in the air. Uh, there will be shadows underneath it, uh, depending on where the light's coming from, of course. Just softening the edges with some clean water and uh, lightening some of the areas. Just getting a, a variety of uh, tonal value in those clouds, leaving some of the uh, paper white. The other thing to remember about clouds, the further away they are from you, the, the closer the shadows will, will look together and they'll be flatter. Just another tip. Again, just practice, practice, practice with clouds. Just strengthening some of the blue. I've let the sky dry and I've just added some uh, a small touch of Prussian blue which has got a slight green tint to it for the uh, for the sea just to differentiate it from the sky there's a pool of water a large puddle if you like on the on the beach in my imagination, just just in front of the uh, three figures standing there. So I want to make sure that I get uh, that reflection of that uh, blue sky in the water. This is uh, raw sienna for the beach. Uh, starting off with a fairly light mix and uh, as it gets closer to us I will add some darker patches 
into the in painting wet in wet so that you get a nice soft edge. Just gently touching the brush onto the paper and letting the uh, the wet in wet give that soft and softness as I said before just blending it all just so you get a variety of tones on the sand warm and darker colors tend to come forward so it, the, it lets the eye think that uh, there's some distance there. There's a wet patch of sand on the right and uh, I, just, <laughs> I just painted it too blue and I just wiped it off. Not happy with the, uh, the tonal value. Again, dabbing it away. I'll come back to that shortly. Just added a tiny touch of jadeite green to the uh, the sea mix, just for those waves hitting the shore. Not very big waves; they're just uh, you know just rolling, gentle waves on the shore. Just adds a little bit of uh, tonal colour. And towards the end, I'll add some uh, some white patches as well for uh, where the where the waves are breaking. Just loosely sketching in the shadow around the boat and some damp uh, damp sand. I think I've finally got the colour ha I'm happy with, with uh, for this. It's, I think it's a touch of jadeite green with um, a little bit of burnt, uh, burnt sienna just to create that uh, shadow and wet sand look. Again went too dark there. Dab it off with a clean paper towel. Just putting a little bit of shadow where the figures are going to be. Just mixed up some uh, sepia and raw sienna for the uh, for the boat or the wreck. The reason I painted the sea behind it. Uh, through the boat because there will be gaps where you can see through the wreckage. Just getting the shape of the boat in, in, the, in the, initially with, a, with this wash. Just darkening the underside of the boat there. A few patches of dark. Just using some, some clean water to soften those shadows around the boat and the wet sand. Just using a stronger mix now just to, uh, it's almost neat, uh, neat sepia this just for the darkest parts of the boat or the wreck I should say as I add these darker patches the boat uh, starts to 
become more three-dimensional. This is um, some neat white gouache just to um, just to add a little bit of highlight on the uh, waves hitting the shore. They're quite a way away, so I'm not trying to be too uh, too detailed with them. Just a few patches of white here and there. Same with those distant uh, yachts. Just a small dab of white just for the for the sails. I'll put uh, I'll put some mast details in shortly. Just painting the heads on these figures and there's a I'll put a dog there as well. Keep the heads small when you're doing uh, figures like this. There's a, there's a tendency to paint the heads too big. I'm just going to paint the figures in uh, grey. This is neutral tint just to as as a, a background for the uh, the color that I'm going to add shortly this is orange for the, the jacket on the right and uh, I think I'm using uh, ultramarine for the uh, the middle figure and the figure on the left I am going to paint yellow. Just darkening the, uh, the dog so that it stands out a bit more. And the same with the legs on the figures. When you're painting figures like this, always try and paint one leg slightly shorter than the other. It's, it suggests that they're moving. Just using some neutral tint for the uh, distant yachts. They're a long way away, so it's, it literally is, and, the, and for the mast as well, they're a long way away, so it's literally just a question of suggesting they're there. Just enough to draw the eye across the page. And I think I'm pretty much done. I've just added uh, some reflection of the figures in that, uh, in that puddle. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and you've learned something from it about uh, rule of thirds. And if you found it useful, please give it a like, uh, do subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos. And thanks again for watching.